Thanks for checking out our video. Feel free to join our free weekly newsletter called Pop Culture Annotated and also join our Discord server to talk with us and others that share your fandom in pop culture entertainment. Links in the description. Hey everyone, how's it going? So Aquaman releasing March 26th on Blu-ray was a huge step in the right direction for WB and DC films for a lot of different reasons. I mean, on one hand, it was a lot of really good execution on James Wan and company's part for really just giving us a solo adventure for a character like Aquaman, who a lot of people underestimated and kind of laughed at over the years. I mean, the fact that this was the hero for a lot of people to really get them on board with this next phase of upcoming DC films it's kind of crazy to think about. Aquaman is, you know, that character for a lot of people nowadays that they're going to think of when they think of DC films. The film introduced not only the world of Aquaman and the world of the DCU to a lot of new fans, but also fantastical elements such as Atlantis and also the creatures that inhabit it. And on top of all of that, I think a fan favorite for a lot of people, at least for me, was when Arthur emerged wielding Atlantis' trident alongside the Karathin, voiced by the legendary Julie Andrews by his side. And for some fans, they left the theaters wondering, you know, what is the Karathin? And is it from the comics? And while we would have made this video, you know, a few months ago when Aquaman first came out, we ended up not being able to. So I figured, hey, with the coming out on Blu-ray, why not now? So to put it simply, the Karathin is an ancient sea monster believed to be imprisoned by King Atlan. However, the truth was revealed that that's not the case. And instead of being imprisoned by King Atlan, instead it was an ancient guardian of the seas that was loyal to King Atlan and his forces. It actually measures, according to those who worked on the production, at two miles in length, which is huge. But the Karathin is able to telepathically communicate with certain Atlanteans, such as Atlan and Arthur. And for others, it can still telepathically connect with them, you just can't communicate back with the Karathin. And this led to a bond between Atlan and the Karathin forming, which led to him eventually asking the Karathin to protect his body and the scepter, or I guess the trident I should say, upon his death, which is something the Karathin did for about a millennia before Arthur finally arrived. With a body resembling a dragon, a squid, shrimp in some parts, and even traditional leviathans from mythology, the Karathin looks like it actually could be a kaiju from the Pacific film franchise. It possesses tentacles along with powerful claws to swipe and attack entire warships with ease, and it can also outswim any creature in the oceans along with withstanding advanced weaponry from even the forces of Atlantis. And this durability actually translates to her being able to also emerge from the Earth's core covered in lava without any damage or really it seemingly bothering the Karathin whatsoever. And the telepathy, along with being basically immortal, provides the Karathin with a great reservoir of wisdom and knowledge, being able to read someone's mind and essentially learn about them and learn their history in seconds, even though as we learned in Aquaman, that's not necessarily the same thing as learning someone's intentions and personality. But with regards to inspiration for the creature, it's widely believed the creature is, like I said before, inspired by various sea monsters such as the Kraken along with the amphibious monsters from Pacific Rim. And it's worth noting that, you know, besides those kaijus, Arthur's father had a book called The Dunwich Horror, which was at the Curry House, and while a nice easter egg, that book does include Lovecraftian entities which are commonly depicted deep in the oceans such as Cthulhu. And while this doesn't mean the Karathin is obviously an outer god or a great old one, it could at least indicate some potential influences regarding whether maybe the origins, if they want to dive deeper in that in a later film, or just just general design concepts altogether. If that's really it. Comment below your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about the Karathin? Are you gonna buy Aquaman on Blu-ray? Let us know down below, and we'll see you guys later.